welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today I wanted to discuss the usefulness of Bollinger Bands. They are definitely a useful tool, but they're just a tool. The Bollinger Bands as an overbought or oversold indicator really are just a suggestion. They're just there to help you. They're not perfect and I want you to use them if you need them, but you don't have to use them. Okay, I think of Bollinger Bands as training wheels. Okay, like with a bicycle you have training wheels. Could you use training wheels forever? I guess you could, but really they're meant they're they're not meant to be used forever. You when you're learning when you're first starting to learn how to ride a bicycle, you can put the training wheels on to help you, but you probably don't want to keep them on there forever. You could, but if you can take them off after a while, if you can take off the training wheels, you'll probably want to do that. So you'll have more independence uh, as, as you learn how to ride the bike on your own. And it's the same thing with Bollinger Bands. You can, you can use them forever, and that's fine, and there's nothing wrong with them. But if you want to become independent, in other words, if you don't want to depend on the Bollinger Bands and you want to uh, learn to not use them after a while, that's fine too. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. Uh, we'll start with Twitter. You know, it's funny. Uh, when Twitter, uh, maybe a week, a week or a week and a half ago, got up to the 25 area, uh, people on message boards would laugh at me <laughs> for saying that uh, yeah I'll I'll buy Twitter when it reaches let's say the uh, the 14 area and people would laugh at me <laughs> because Twitter was around 25 and they would say come on Twitter's never gonna reach 14 ever again well now that uh, a week later a week and a half later Twitter uh, is in the 16s. Uh, you know those people are not laughing at me so much anymore <laughs> all right so uh, you know you have to have patience and let the price come to your target don't chase it because the people who had bought at 25 telling me that Twitter would never ever reach 14 again you know I I, I don't think they're doing too well now so anyway we have the Bollinger Bands on here and yeah if a new student comes to me and says, you know, when do I buy? When do I sell? And if if they're an emotional trader, if they watch the, if they look at every news article, and you know they're letting every little tick of of you know of the price, every movement of the price, if if they're really getting emotional about it and wondering if they're missing out, should I buy now? Should I not buy now? I don't know. I'm watching the news and I'm reading articles and one article says I should buy and another one says I should sell and and you know maybe Twitter's gonna get bought out uh, maybe there will be a buyout or maybe there won't be a buyout I don't know what to do if somebody's a beginning trader or an emotional trader they're getting too emotional I usually I, I give them the training wheels I tell them yeah I say look let's take the emotion and the guesswork and the predicting out of the trading and we'll just use the Bollinger Bands, okay? <laughs> I'm not saying don't read the news, but if you're getting too emotional because of it, let's just use the Bollinger Bands, okay? So when the when the price reaches the bottom Bollinger Band, then you buy, okay? You can either buy the stock or you can buy call options or call spreads, and then when it hits the top Bollinger Band, then you sell. It's simple. It's just one indicator instead of, and, and also for people who look at 15 different indicators, again, I, I go back to the training wheels. I tell them just look at this one indicator and just use that because it's really simple and it's easy to follow. Okay, And it works pretty well. If somebody had bought uh, when it reached the bottom band here and then sold here, they would have made money. If they had bought when it hit the bottom band here and then sold when it hit the top band, they would have done well. Uh, if they had bought when it uh, reached the bottom band and then sold when it hit the top band, again, they would have made money. They would have done well. Is it a perfect indicator? No, but it works pretty well. It works, I think, more often than it doesn't. Okay, now if somebody has 
been using the Bollinger Bands for a while and they want to get rid of the training wheels, so to speak. They want to become, you know, not, not as dependent on the indicator. That's fine too. Uh, then I tell them, you know, you can get rid of or you can ignore the Bollinger Bands or just take them off your chart, take them off your chart altogether. And you can just use common sense, as I like to call it. All right, so let, let's ignore the Bollinger Bands just for now. And let's just look at the price action here. Well, have you noticed that whenever it reaches the 14 area, it doesn't really go below that? You know, it bounced off of it here and here and here. It, it just didn't go below it. So I'm thinking if the price reaches around the 14 area, I'll probably buy. I'll probably pick up a few shares or maybe calls or call spreads. Now this stock is so cheap that you don't even really need the calls. You could probably just buy the stock outright. But if you want the leverage, you can buy the calls or the call spreads, and that's fine. If if, if you're familiar with options, if you're not familiar familiar with options, then I would not recommend just jumping into it uh, because options are more complicated than stocks in most cases. All right. So you know, again, the people when it got up here, people said it would never reach 14 again. A, you know, a, a week or a week and a half later, it's a definite possibility. It's already down to the 16s. It could easily reach the 14s. So I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it. It's on my watch list. Now, does that mean that if it hits 14, that it it cannot go lower? Of course, it can go lower. Absolutely. But if I buy it at 14, then at least I know that I got a pr I, I bought it at a pretty good price, better than 16 or 20 or 25. That's for sure. If I buy it at 14 and, go, and it goes lower, okay, so it goes lower. But I know that I bought at a good price and I feel good about it and I'm confident that it'll probably go back up at some point. And I'll feel better than the people who bought it at 20 or 25. <laughs> That's for sure. Let's look at other examples. Netflix. Yeah, the, the Bollinger Bands can be used as a buy or sell signal. Okay, if you bought when it hit the bottom Bollinger Band around here, and then sold when it hit the top one, you would have made money. Okay, you could have made money several times. Okay, uh, it, it hit the bottom band here, and then, you know, you could have bought here, and then when it hit the top band, you could have sold. All right? Uh, it's not perfect. For example, it hit the bottom band here, and then it went down some, but if you had held on, and if you had been patient, you would have made money because it, it came back up and hit the top band and uh, you would have made money from here to here. But if you want to get rid of the training wheels, then you know if, if you learn to take the emotions, if you can train yourself to take the emotions out of investing and trading, then you could also just ignore the Bollinger Bands and say, hey, you know what? 86 is a really good price for this stock. Because look, when it went down to 86, it came right back up. Again, came right back up. Again, came right back up. So, and some people would call this a support, uh, you know, okay, you can use the terminology if you want to. Um, I think the terminology support and resistance, I think that's misleading because it makes it sound like it cannot go below 86. But I'll tell you what, if it goes down to 86, I, I might be a buyer of this stock. And could it go below 86 after I buy it at 86? Of course it could. But at least I bought it at a pretty good price. Let's look at Target. Again, the Bollinger Bands have worked pretty well here. Uh, when it hit the, the, you know, there was an earnings miss and it hit the bottom band. But, you know, eventually it came back up if you held on. Or, or even just a short-term play. You could have bought here and sold here. Fine. Uh, but if you had held on until it hit the top band, okay. You would have bought here you would have sold here, you would have done okay. Uh, or better yet, if you had bought when it hit the, ball, the bottom band here and then sold here, you would, have made, you would have made money. If you had bought when it hit the bottom band and then sold when it hit the top band here and here, you would have made money. All right. So you get the idea. But it's not a perfect indicator. So if you wanted to get rid of the training wheels, so to speak, you could have looked at this and said, hey, you know what, 66 or thereabouts is a pretty good price for this stock. And when it was up here, people probably thought, oh, it'll never reach 66 ever again. Uh, yeah, but guess what? Well, 
now it's it's uh, in the 60 in the low 68s it could easily reach 66 again and that would be a pretty good buying price at least I think so here's Alibaba same thing if you had bought when it hit the bottom band here sold here at the top band you would have done well all right uh, bought at the bottom band here sold at the top band here would have done well so on and so forth but if you wanted to get rid of the training wheels or if you just feel that this is not a perfect indicator which it's not that's fine you could say you, you could ignore the bands and say okay well around 75 it, it's you know 75 76 let's say let's say 76 it bounced off that level one two three four times never really went below it in the past few months it could go below it again but at least if you bought it at 76 let's say you'd be buying at a pretty good price a lot better than in the hundreds it could go below it after you buy it but you, you should feel good about your purchase and be pretty confident if you believe in this company that it will come back up at some point so if you'd like to learn more about Bollinger Bands or maybe getting weaning yourself off of the Bollinger Bands, getting, you know, getting re rid of those training wheels once you get a real control over your emotions, uh, you can contact me at any time. Send me an email. My name is David Modell and you can email me at davidmodell at gmail.com. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, then please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Leave a comment because I like to read your comments and it helps me know what, what you're looking for when you watch my videos. And please subscribe to my channel so you can receive the latest in my financial educational content. Thank you so much and I'll talk to you soon.